you can tell the people that use 3D renderings uh, compared to just Photoshop or just a basic uh, photo. Uh, thank you. And it's so important because that's the the you know that's when people want to move forward with your product. Hey everyone, it's Norm Ferrar, aka The Beard Guy here, and welcome to another Lunch with Norm, the e-commerce and Amazon FBA podcast. Today, we're going to be discussing how to launch your product on Amazon with PPC in 2024. Today, we're going to be also discussing the key factors to consider when developing a new product, what's working, what's not, the best practices, and why it's important uh, to track organic keywords. So welcome to another Lunch with Norm, the uh, e-commerce and Amazon FBA podcast. All right, like I mentioned today, it's going to be all about launching a product on Amazon uh, with PPC in 2024. Our guest is the founder and CEO of IG PPC. As a long-term Amazon seller, he made it his mission to help others with their PPC. His deep understanding of the, al uh, uh, the Amazon algorithm, uh, not Walmart, but Amazon algorithm, undoubtedly gives uh, our, our, their clients uh, an unfair advantage. And I am talking about a first time guest, Isaac Gross. Guess what, guys? That's the first time in about 10 episodes I've been able to pronounce a name. I'm, I'm surprised they didn't screw that one up. But uh, anyways, let's hear from our sponsor and we'll come right back. Facing cash flow challenges with your e-commerce business? Discover Viably, your ultimate financial ally. From real-time sales data integrations to immediate funding access, Viably is here to support you. Plan your growth with their free tool for online sellers and engage with specialists whenever you need. Extend your cash flow with Viably. Enjoy this episode. Welcome, Isaac. Hey, welcome, Laura. Excited to be here. Ah, I'm excited to have you. So uh, we were at an event together in New Jersey and yes. we started talking and you were telling me, uh, you know, what you specialize in. And it's not wood photography. It, or it, it, yeah, it's not, it's not wood photography. It is PPC. So I thought, I, it's interesting because you think you know a lot of people in the business and then somebody that's been around for quite a long time you just meet. And I thought that was pretty cool. So you've been doing this for a while, haven't you, Isaac? Yeah. So first of all, for me, I felt that I know you already for a long time because I've been listening to your podcast. And I believe we have, we've probably met before because I go to every single, not every single, but a lot of Amazon shows. I'm the guy with the beard. I know that. I have a beard too. <laughs> <laughs> and we, we we definitely cross paths here and there. But I think the first time, yeah, we had a good conversation. Like just one on one was um, when was it two weeks ago? I think in New Jersey. Yep. And yeah, that was great. And I'm really excited to be here because I've watched your uh, podcast, you know, for years with other great guests. So excited to be here. All right. That's great. And I can't wait to dig into it. So let's start off with uh, some of the key factors. What are you seeing that um, the key factors to consider when developing a new product? Okay. Great question. So first of all, I also love the conversation you had before I came on. Um, I was listening about product photography because yeah. we'll get to that as well, because all that is part of a good launch strategy. So I've been on Amazon since uh, 2015 when I started as an Amazon seller. I think like most of us, right? Back then in 2015, uh, it was a totally different landscape than it is today, right? The way how people launch a product then was they just went to Alibaba, found a product and you just slapped on a label and it literally sold. Like most of the products that you put onto Amazon sold with PPC, without PPC, it sold, right? Today we're, go we're heading into 2024 the landscape on Amazon is very different. It's way more competitive. So a product launch, which is our topic for today, it really starts at the beginning, right? When you start to bring in a product. So when you're doing product development, you bring, you're bringing in a product, it's important to analyze the market, right? You want to make sure that you'll have some kind of competitive edge, some kind of leverage in this market versus your competitors. 
So if you're coming into a market that your competitors are all, I like to call them like they're Amazon savvy sellers, right? They know the game. They have beautiful images, good pricing, tens of thousands or th even thousands of reviews. What are you going to bring to this market? If you're launching another Me Too product, you'll have a very hard time really breaking in and taking away market share from these sellers that have, again, a ton of reviews and have been there for years. That's why a, pro a successful product launch starts with smart product development. And, and what I mean by that is you need to find some kind of edge. It's either a better, a better product. Sometimes you can still find a market where the market is not so Amazon savvy. They're not so sophisticated. The listings aren't great. So you're like, look, I'll bring in the same product as anyone else, but I will make a nicer main image. I understand that Amazon get better. I will make nicer um, listings, infographics, all that. So whatever your competitive advantage will be, make sure that you have one. Sometimes it can even be in price. Let's say through the manufacturer yourself, you can, you know, have better prices than the market. That's also a competitive edge, even though that's a little bit more, I would say a risky um, competitive edge to have just because if you'll be lower in price, the whole market can come down. Eventually everybody can lower the price, but the point is that you need to make sure that you have some kind of edge in the market. And because of this, you know, people might buy your product versus a competitor. I feel that I want to add one thing here, which I have a lot of times, like uh, people call me, they say, hey, I have this and that product on Amazon. I'm just launching it. Um, it's a new type of product. It has never been on Amazon before. So obviously when you have a new product that has never been on Amazon before, there are there are pros and cons, right? The pros are simple, that you have a product that nobody else has. So, you know, there's not a lot of competition. But then the question is, who says there's a need for this product on Amazon? Who says that people on Amazon are willing to pay even the price for a product like this? So even let's say if somebody takes an existing product and they improve it, they add a few more features and they charge a premium price, it can be a little bit risky when you do that because the market like has not yet shown that they're willing to pay a premium price for this product, even if it has more features than other products. So it's important that when you think about taking a product and making it better, um, it's important to take, in, take into account that when you're adding a feature or and you'll be way more expensive than the market, it might be that the, that the market is not ready to pay that price that, that you're asking for. So that should be taken with caution when you're launching a new product, make sure there's demand on Amazon for this product at this particular price range and price point that you're bringing in. So that's step number one. Okay. So, so if, if I can cut in here for a second, uh, one of the things, and now this is all, it, it all leads up to what our main topic is today uh, is going to be PPC, but this is so important that, uh, and I can give you an example. Uh, when Tim and I, Tim Jordan and I had our, um, our Centurion League, uh, we wanted to show people uh, how you could dig into it. I know um, him and Bradley Sutton uh, did something with the wooden coffin shelf, uh, but we wanted to show something how quick you could do it and get something in a sub niche that you could kill it with uh, PPC. And what we did uh, and some of you have probably heard this, but we just went to Alibaba and we started, or sorry, we went on to a Amazon. I don't know how we got on tortillas. We're both foodies. So we went into a tortilla press and we noticed that there was metal tortilla presses and that pretty much swamped, saturated the market. We looked on Alibaba for tortilla presses for something different. And uh, we noticed that there was a wooden one. And then I think it was Tim that said, you know what we can do with this? Instead of getting the wood from China, let's make it in South America. Let's make this an authentic tortilla chest, uh, a press. And then when we did this, that was it. I mean, that was the market. Now that we've said it, there was no, really, there was maybe one wooden tortilla press out there. And first of all, Isaac, get this. So the metal ones were more expensive to buy. The landed cost was more expensive. And they were at around 20, I think it was 29 bucks. Ours were less expensive and you could sell it at $99. Oh, wow. Yeah. And wow. now, of course, you know, they're completely saturated because the word got out. And, uh, but this, 
for, and we didn't get, we were just showing this as an example. We didn't get into it, but uh, I can tell you, and you, hopefully you agree that if you had a niche like that, and we noticed that people were searching for alternatives uh, like wooden, uh, we saw it. We saw it in the helium 10, like when we were doing the, the uh, CE bro. Uh, and that's by the way, is how we also understood that that's a good way to get into the marketplaces. We saw that people were searching for wooden, uh, but it's also opens up the gate for PPC, doesn't it? hundred percent. That's actually a great example of this. And by the way, what you mentioned about seeing the keywords in Cerebro, that's also a great point because when you do keyword research, a lot of times uh, you get different ideas for product development and the same with PPC. Let's say you have a product and you see in the keywords, Hey, people searching, you know, this material, this color, and nobody has this color. So this is actually, yeah. Like very great, uh, a very great point is that in keyword research, a lot of times you can get great ideas for product development, either new products or as like new different features or colors in this particular product. So yeah, uh, basically proving my point. And as you said, like after after having this product out of the market for a couple of months or or a year or two, it'll be flooded with you know with a ton of competitors that will bring the price down. Anyway, so we have a product, right? The second thing you need to do in the product journey, let's call it, is to have a beautiful listing, right? You need to present your listing to the world. People don't go into a store. They can't touch or feel your product. They see it online and you need to have a beautiful listing, a beautiful main image and nice secondary images, lifestyle images, infographics. People these days are very visual and people read less and they want to like in the blink of an eye, you need to basically impress them to catch them, right? Um, I posted on LinkedIn, I think it was last week, on um, that Amazon recently released in a blog post. They said that over 50% of most purchases, over 50% of purchases on Amazon happen in less than three minutes. That means the customer comes to Amazon, they search, they have three minutes until they're checked out, okay? And that shows the importance of having a beautiful listing that somebody should quickly get an idea what this product is. They can see all the pros and cons of features and it talks to them and they will check out and buy. One very important thing, I would say this is probably the most important part of, of your listing is your main image. So people ask me a lot of times, what, what are the traits? Like we work with a lot of really large brands and so they ask me, what are the traits you see in a successful seller? So it's hard to answer because there's a, obviously a lot of different traits and different sellers but one of the strong like one of the main points that i see that successful sellers do they obsess with their main image they literally like this is the most important thing when they launch a product and it makes a lot of sense right because you're in a crowded marketplace you're basically let's say somebody searching for garlic grass right you have competitors all over you around you when they click in under your listing everywhere right you have competitors selling the exact same product that you're selling and the main image is what they see the first thing and you need to make sure to stand out so that's why i love your conversation about product photography there's cheaper options more expensive options and as you said that if you're having if you have a wood product make sure that your photographer specializes in wood and i can't stress this enough and there's tools like uh, picfu other similar tools where you can split test your main image and get from real people um, feedback, which of these images talk to them, which one um, is nicer and which one stands out. A lot of times you will have one perspective, but when you talk to other people, they will have a different perspective. Either use PicFu or just go around to friends, family, team, ask them, which one of these pictures um, do you like more? I'm actually a big fan of 3D rendering. I wonder your opinion on this norm, but I think 3Ds um, make your product look really sharp, crispy. Um, Again, a good photographer can do that as well, but 3D renderings, I'm a big fan of this. So again, yeah. Yeah, I was gonna say with 3D renderings, um, one of the the tips, and you could you could look at this for uh pillows or sheets or anything that wrinkles, uh you you need a 3D rendering. Right. And even when you're talking about a a, a, a cylinder, you know, like a, a lot of bottles, like let's say supplements, you can tell the people that use 3d renderings uh compared to just photoshop or just a basic uh photo uh 
thank you and it's so important because that's the the you know that's when people want to move forward with your product and by the way isaac when somebody is doing a search i i do this in a presentation i i i really want you know three minutes to buy but it's a microsecond to pick which product you're going to go and check so when i when i do mine or when i do a search i've taken a search uh for um knives Okay, Damascus knives, chef knives. And I've got this sheet that's, I don't know, I think it's got 16 different uh, groups on there, including the sponsored ads. Right. And I just let people see it for a second. And then I say, which one would you have picked? And nine out of 10 people in the room pick one. Wow. And then the other ones, I can tell, pick the other. Everybody else? doesn't have a chance. Wow. You know, and yeah. it's it, it's so crazy, but it's psychology. And this is, a for me, uh, I use pattern interruption. I use different colors within the packaging. So, mm. so if I see if everything is packaged in black or if we've got red uh, plastic shoe stretchers, you know, mine's going to be different because I want that pattern interrupt. And it works so well. Uh, that it'll get it piques people interest interest now whether people go ahead and buy your product is a whole other thing that's you know on the listing optimizations the rating the quality all of this other stuff but exactly. that's one of the first things to to get people to click through right right yeah get people to click in yeah and it's a great point what you mentioned I think like angry orange was a great um, case study yeah. for this, right of Thrasio they had a different color it was obviously standing out and that's also a great uh, point to add that if you have packaging. Again, it really depends on the product, but a lot of times it's worth to have the packaging in the main image. I think it shows a certain legitimacy of the product that it has a nice um, packaging. So again, if it makes sense, um, have your packaging also in the main image. So now we have your um, main image. We have, the, um, we have the secondary images. Our next step is to have a uh, well-optimized title and bullet points. Now, title bullet points, they need to be optimized for two reasons, right? optimized for the algorithm to make sure to explain for the Amazon machine, for the brain, for the Amazon algorithm, what is my product? So you need to have the right keywords in the title and bullet points. And we'll go through soon how to uh, choose your keywords wisely. Um, so that's number one for the algorithm, but also it needs to be written for people, right? You can't just stuff it with keywords. Real people will be on the other side of the screen and actually buy a product. I actually made a post on LinkedIn a few weeks ago like one of the most uh, popular keywords in brand analytics is my orders. It's obviously not a keyword like that people are looking to buy, right? People searching for their orders. So, so they go into the Amazon search bar and they search for my orders. So I saw a listing which has the first word in, in their title was my orders. So number one, you don't even want to rank on my orders. It's not a keyword that will actually bring you sales. But even if you do want to rank, don't have the first words of your title, my orders right? Even if you want to have those, that keyword, have it somewhere in the back end, not in your title. So it's, it's always important, title bullet points, make sure it's written well for the Amazon algorithm and make sure it's written also for people. It's well written, it's legible, it's clean, and people understand what the product is. Another important factor is being in the right category and subcategory. So back in the days, Norm, I believe you'll remember that, that was like, let's call it one of the more black hat days of Amazon. People used to play around with subcategories that wanted to be in this rare subcategory in order to win the bestseller badge. Number one, it's not in the terms of service, but number two, even if you feel that you're playing, you know, it's gray area, but you want to make sure that you're in the right subcategory because today Amazon takes a lot of understanding of what your product is from the subcategory. So it's always important to make sure look in the right categories where your main competitors are make sure that you're in a subcategory that is actually relevant to your product. It's not worth, um, you know, cheating and getting into a different subcategory just for the bestseller badge. It'll hurt your organic ranking. So now we have a product. It's already live on Amazon. Of course, you send an inventory. Now make sure to get reviews. For reviews, I highly recommend to use Vine. Again, the Vine reviews are critical. So you need to make sure that you have a good product. If a product is not good, they will, <laughs> they will tell it to the world. So yeah but make sure to use vine now 
we go to PPC, right? So when doing uh, when oh, this is this is PPC for your your launch, correct? Right, exactly. So we're starting PPC now. Before you do PPC, um, one of the most important things of a successful launch is is having a decent conversion rate. Now we all know the Amazon honeymoon period. Amazon basically gives you know the benefit of the doubt. Your new product, Amazon understands that you're not going to have the conversion rate of your top seller. Amazon doesn't expect that from you, right? But you still want to send the signals to Amazon that this is a product that is converting well, right? Now, a good conversion rate is all relative to the price point and to the market. But you need to think, um, and I always tell that to clients, like if you're launching a product and it says, be the first one to review this product, or even if you have already a couple of reviews, right? Why should somebody buy your product versus the competitor? Let's say even your product is a little bit better. Let's say your listings are beautiful, but still you have competitors that have thousands or tens of thousands of reviews, right? You need to make people want to take a chance on your product. So one of the strongest levers you can pull is actually price. If you come in at a lower price point than your competitors, people will take the risk on your product and say, look, this product it looks decent. It has a good man image. It has a, you know, it feels legit and it's cheaper than the competitors. Let me buy this product. So can, again, can that price be higher and then use a digital coupon uh, or does it have to just uh, be lower, like a, a sale price? It's a great question. So some people will do a higher price in the beginning with a coupon and then lower the real price. The reason why they do it is because when you lower the price, you get this red badge. It says like lowest price in 20 days. But ideally, you would want to have the ultimate goal is to have a lower price. That's what I've seen um, a lot of times that let's say a, a, a $30 price with a $10 coupon or a $20 price, the $20 price will convert better than the $30 price with a $10 coupon. Um, many, you know, like it feels, I don't know why, but it feels cheaper when you have just a, a $20 uh, price point. But again, as I said, some like to have in the beginning a higher price with a coupon just so they can get some sales at a higher price point. Then when they lower the price, let's say to $20, they get this red badge, which it's it's not so black and white and you don't always get it. But they get this red badge of says like the lowest price of 30 days. And that helps a lot. So again, have a low price. I would say usually 10 or 20% lower than the market. And you can play around this as you see your conversion rates. But have a low price in order to entice people to take a risk on your product, even if you have no or just a, a few reviews on when, when you're starting out. Now let's start doing with a keyword research. So keyword research, um, that's for... Again, so can we go back to the PPC? Yes. So we'll okay. go to the keyword research and we'll start... Oh, all right. Okay. So it's right? leading in. Okay. So why don't we stop there? So Isaac, I'm sorry I've been interrupt, uh, interrupting you, but there is, okay. uh, you know, some some questions I thought I, I would want to, uh, you know, I know that the listeners are asking, you know, but uh, okay. we haven't seen them in the comment sure. comments yet, but I know they want to know this information. So please keep in mind where you're at right now, because it's at the bottom of the hour. And at the bottom of the hour, this is where we talk about our giveaway and our giveaway is always called uh, hashtag wheel of Kelsey. And that's actually, if you want to enter, you would put in hashtag wheel of Kelsey or tag two people and you'd get a second entry. And Isaac, can you describe what the, uh, the prize is today? Sure. So the prize is a free hour of consultation with myself. Um, I will basically have, again, it could either be just, you could, pick my brain for an hour. If you want, you can give me access in advance to your account so I can actually audit your PPC and then on this one hour consultation, give you some actionable advice on what to implement and what I've seen on your account and, you know, advise you and consult you on how to make it better and give you, you know, my two cents. So again, either if you're, if you're just starting out and you just want to pick my brain for an hour, if you want me to look at your account, that's totally up to you, but I will give you a one hour free consultation of my time. And uh, as I, or as Isaac was mentioning earlier on, uh, he has small, medium sized companies he works with, but he works with huge companies. So he's got that mix. So if you're right. interested in uh, having uh, uh, Isaac dig into your account 
and from an area, somebody that has is working with large brands, uh, small and medium sized businesses, and get his expertise advice for an hour. Hashtag Wheel of Kelsey, tag two people, and we'll get uh, we'll get you an entry. Okay, now Kels, let's go to a sponsor, and then we'll come right back with Alex. Or this with episode Al. of Lunch with Norm is sponsored by VAA Philippines. Looking for a high quality virtual assistant for your business? With the rigorous screening, intensive Amazon and Walmart training, and ongoing professional development, get the peace of mind with skill and motivated virtual assistants for a long-term working relationship. Hire through VAA today, and now let's get back to the show. Hey, I see one of our mutual friends is on here, Nir. Hey, good to see you, Nir. Okay, so let's continue here, and please ask questions, shoot away. Nir, I know you've probably uh, got a few questions, but Nir knows everything, so... Oh, yes. <laughs> Anyways, let's, uh, there I go. Anyway, so how, I don't know how many times I said it so far. I think twice. I'm trying to cut that back. Uh, let's get into continuing on with your PPC, which was leading into keywords. Right. So the first thing, of course, before you start doing PPC is doing keyword research. Okay. Now, I'm a big fan of first party data. So I love tools like um, on Helium 10 and Data Dive. But I like to use brand analytics and, and product opportunity explorer before that. So I'll start with brand analytics. That's the main tool that we use. So of course, we'll take your top competitors. We'll make, and you should know your top competitors. Those who are selling the most, they have the lowest, the best of a rank. And you're putting them into brand analytics and you're doing like a reverse ASIN, just like Cerebro and Helium 10. And you're seeing, okay, what are the main keywords that they are that they are the top three click ASINs for, okay? So they, those keywords are usually the top keywords that bring the most sales in this category. And again, you will always also search, let's say it's a garlic press, you will search garlic press and brand analytics, and you'll get a ton of different keywords. Again, if I don't get enough keywords, I will also use Helium 10 to supplement that. But the point is, make sure that you have your top keywords that your competitors are ranking for organically, that your competitors are getting click for. Now, once you have those top keywords, I like to divide it in two, okay? I like to have a top um, five or 10 keywords in a separate campaign. I will, I call it usually a ranking campaign, okay? So most products on Amazon will have these top five or 10 keywords that these usually bring in the, the largest amount of sales for this particular product. These, they are your main keywords. As a rule of thumb, I like them to be at a search frequency rank of below um, 100,000, they are usually the keywords that, you know, that make it or break it. If you rank on those, you have a lot of sales. If you don't, you probably won't be one of the big players in this category, okay? Now, when you, once you have your top, all of your keywords, make sure to have your top five and 10 keywords, your main keywords in your title and your bullet points, right? So we, we spoke before how important it is to have a well-optimized SEO listing title bullet points. And make sure to have them in exact phrase, like let's say garlic press, garlic press stainless steel, garlic, garlic press uh, for chefs. You know, make sure to have your main keywords as exact match in your title and your bullet points. All the other keywords, it's not so important to have, you know, every single keyword, it's not even possible as exact match. Just make sure you have, you know, all the root keywords in your title and bullet points. Can but I ask more? you how many keyword phrases are you putting into your titles now? So I would say usually it's from, it's probably not going to be more than three. Right. Okay. Also, a lot of times you can have like, let's say garlic press stainless steel has a garlic press in it. And it has also garlic press stainless steel. Right. So it, depending on the keywords, sometimes you could play around that, you know, that you have a few different that like one phrase has already two, two main keywords in it. Right. But usually as a long phrase is no, I mean, you just can't put more than the current character limit. You can't just have too many, but but the title and the bullet points is also very important. So between the, the title and bullet points, I will try to have the top five to ten um, phrases. Okay. Now, once you have the um, main keywords, we call we create something for the top keywords first, what we call a ranking campaign. So this is we go exact match only. 
and we go top of search by 100% or even 150%, depending on how um, competitive these keywords are. And why this is important. So as you mentioned before, right, customers make a decision in a second, right? Most customers don't scroll through an entire page. That's why top of search, which is basically the first spots that show up on PPC, that's called top of search, and they have the best conversion rate. We have seen in some cases even a 4x conversion rate, four times versus rest of search and product placement, but usually on average is two to three times a better conversion rate and usually 10 times um, better click-through rates, okay? So when what happens when you convert well on a keyword through PPC? You start to rank organically, right? You show the signals to Amazon that this product is a product that's relevant for this keyword. It converts well. So when you convert well through PPC, you start to convert well. You start to rank well on organically. So it's very important for your main keywords to make sure that you win top of search. Okay. So and go exact only because you want to make sure to concentrate the traffic to those keywords. And I would usually put forty to fifty percent of our total launch budget for these ranking campaign for the ranking keywords. Okay. Now these ranking keywords, make sure to track them in Helium 10 to see where they rank organically, because these are the main keywords that you want to hook on. You want to sit on them. You want to make sure they're getting clicks. They're getting orders through top of search. They're converting well, and you want to track and monitor um, how they rank organically, if they improve or, or not and make changes accordingly. I want to add just one word on those ranking keywords and then we'll continue to to the next phase of the ppc when we will see for example a keyword in brand analytics that the market share between the top three click asins is less than 20 percent we will probably not choose that as a ranking keyword so i'll give an example so let's say i have a cup of here in front of me right mm -hmm. the word cup might have you know a very low search frequency rank it might have a lot of search volume right but the word cup is a little bit too broad somebody searching for cup can look for a paper cup plastic cup a cup for coffee a cup a cup for many different things right so even though the search volume is high the buying intent of this keyword is a little bit lower it's more of a keyword that people will be browsing and it's hard to have a really good conversion rate again i'm just giving an example of cups maybe cups does have a good conversion rate but i'm saying the concept is that make sure that your keywords have a high it's a hard converting keyword okay and a good way how to get an idea of that is when you look in brand analytics on the on the top three click asins their conversion share what's the conversion share of the top three asins i would like to see at least a 25 to 30 percent conversion share that means the top three they get around 30 percent of the pie of all purchases for this keyword if you see that their conversion share is less than 20 percent usually that's a keyword that has it's more of a browsing keyword. The buying intent, the conversion intent is not so high. And I would be more careful when I put in a keyword like this in a ranking campaign. So the point is with the ranking campaign, where you go very aggressive after you tap keywords, you want to make sure that number one, they have high search volume, but you also want to make sure that they're very relevant and very direct to your product and competitors like yours like your type of product is converting well on those keywords, okay? So just to the listener, what you just said, the last two minutes, if you missed it, if you went for a cup of coffee, that point alone is worth coming back to the podcast and re-listening. So we will put this into a short reel uh, about that point that you brought out, but that is so critical. Cool. Yes, it is very important. And it's and that's where you need to put a lot of emphasis. And also because if you go very aggressive after a keyword that has a low conversion rate, that might hurt your ranking as well. It'll have the opposite effect, what you want to have. Okay. So again, now we have your ranking campaign. We have the main keywords. Now, one more point. If you see one of your keywords over here, um, they don't get impressions, they don't get clicks. I would usually take out that keyword and put it into a single keyword campaign. I usually don't do single keyword campaigns, only if there's a reason for me to do it. So we'll, we'll take out usually those keywords that don't get impressions or clicks from these top ranking keywords in a single keyword campaign, you know, sort of treat them separately. And in that, um, 
an event campaign will go more aggressive on top of search, more aggressive on the bid, just to make sure that we take care of this keyword and we try that it should get impressions and clicks. So that's your main keywords. Now, all the other keywords, which are more the long tail keywords, they're also super important. We'll usually create a, an exact campaign, a separate campaign for broad and a separate campaign for phrase. The reason why we do a separate campaign is number one, it's cleaner. You can you can easily see how they how broad phrase and exact form. Some products do well with broad, some don't, um, or vice versa, exact or phrase. So it's important to it's not number one, it's clean, but also you want to be able to control the budget, right? If you see, let's say broad is not doing so well, but you still want to have it, you want to lower the budget, or if you see that exact or phrase is not doing good or it is doing, you would want to increase and play around with the budget. So that's why I usually like to have separate budgets for exact, phrase, and broad. Now, another important campaign that we'll do is uh, product ASIN targeting. Make sure that you target your competitors and you, sh you show up on their listings. Now, one more campaign that we'll do is an auto campaign. So the auto campaign, just an interesting point, um, I believe that auto campaigns are not so important for keyword harvesting. For some products, it is important, but I think if keyword research is done right, you should have covered your, and you have phrase and broad, right? You should cover 90% of all the search terms that people will search for. So I think auto campaigns are more important to show up on a lot of different placement where you can only get, where only auto campaigns um, makes you come up there. So one good example is the the deals page, right? So let's say if you have a lightning deal, and and if you if anybody goes to the deals page, you will see uh, some sponsored slots on that page that gets triggered from an auto campaign. So that's just one example, but there's a ton of different examples, like a lot of weird placement on Amazon. For example, um, when you check out, right? So while you're in, when you check out a product while you're like at the cart. There are also a lot of ads. So I'm not 100% sure if those come from auto campaigns. I've tried to verify it with Amazon. They weren't clear. But I've seen that a lot of times that auto campaigns, they get certain placements on Amazon that only an auto campaign gets you there. So auto campaigns are not only important for keyword harvesting. It's always important to have it just because it brings you up on certain pages and placements on Amazon that only an auto campaign will bring you up. So make sure to have an auto campaign. I usually want to have a very high budget on auto campaign, um, but it's important to have it. Now, once you start with the PPC, it's important. Again, as I mentioned, um, the main, your main campaign, your main focus should be on your ranking keywords, and you want to check in on that and make sure they're spending. Check in every single day. Are they getting impressions? If not, increase your bid. Make sure they're getting impressions and they're getting clicks and ultimately sales. Now, usually what we'll do is when we see a certain product um, starting to rank, we'll also track, um, monitor Helium 10, see how your main keywords start trending organically. And when we see a certain product that it starts going in the right direction, we'll usually double down, okay? We'll start spending more on that keyword just to make sure that we're actually continuing the trend that we're seeing and we're getting, again, more clicks and more orders on this keyword to make sure that we're ranked organically. Now, if your if you see that you don't convert, right? That's, uh, let's say you're doing everything right. You know that you have the main keywords that are 100% relevant to your product, but they don't convert. Of course, it always makes sense at the beginning that they won't convert just because, again, as we met, as we mentioned before, like you have just a couple of reviews and usually you, you compare it to have hundreds, thousands or tens of thousands of reviews. But as we said, we you need to have some kind of decent conversion rate in the beginning in order to um, benefit of the honeymoon period. So either if you don't convert, make sure to have, again, maybe your main imagery done something that can improve your conversion rate, but usually price will do the trick. If you don't convert, try to lower your price a little bit more. And again, your goal right now, that's also very important to understand. Again, for most product launches, your goal is not to make money right now. You're not going to make money when you're launching a product. It'll take a few months until you break even, and only after that you will start making money. Your goal right now is to get the traction, to get people to buy a product, to get reviews, to, to get organic ranking. So it's entirely normal to have a tacos of even 80 to 100% in the beginning, to have a high equals. Right now, profit is a 
It's a forbidden word, prophet. Okay, you need to make sure you get, you're getting the traction, you're getting the conversion for your main keywords. But right now is not the time to focus on right. Profit. Yeah. So make sure to, again to double down on the keywords that are working, especially those that convert well, especially in those keywords that you see already some kind of momentum with the organic ranking. So Isaac, I'm going to have to have you come back because we haven't even got through half of what I wanted to talk to you about. And I know that there's three questions and I know you have to go in about seven minutes. So maybe we should head over to the questions and then uh, we'll get you to come back. Sure. Let's do it. Okay. So let's get into these questions. Uh, this one is from Neil. Uh, this is a very timely topic for us. We launched at the beginning of November and we've hardly had any PPC sales. I don't know if I'm doing it wrong or not. What advice does Isaac have for a PPC newbie? Okay. So gr uh, great question. It's hard to answer, you know, um, if I, if I don't see your product, but the question is you're hardly getting any PPC sales is a question. Are you getting PPC clicks? So if you're not getting any clicks, then the answer is simple. You have to increase your bids to make sure that you're getting impressions and clicks. But now the question is, if you're getting clicks, so that means people come into your listing. And of course, assuming the clicks are the, the keywords that you're targeting are 100% relevant. And so if you have the clicks are relevant keywords, but you don't have sales now, that's a conversion issue. So that's what we discussed. And I have to think, why do people come into my listing and they don't buy my product? what can i do right now in order to make people to entice people to buy my product again is your listing up to par yeah what about your price so try to analyze yourself ask people around you to look at your listing like <laughs> i tell you a good story i had a call with a client last week and he said hey this product is not going good this competitor is doing way better than, than we're doing so we had a call and asked him Think for a second in the shoes of a customer. If you see these two products, which one would you buy? And he says, honestly, I would 100% buy my competitor's product. <laughs> like, why do you think that most people are different, right? <laughs> Just because it's your product, people are not going to buy it. So think objectively. If you have a product that you know there's a, again, you know there's a market, you know similar products on Amazon sell, you see people coming in through relevant search terms, through relevant keywords to your listing, and they don't buy, think, what can I do? in order to improve my conversion rate to make them buy? I hope I answer the question. All right. Kels. All right. Uh, the next question is from Ben. Uh, what do you think of sponsored TV? So it's actually a brand new release, and it's something that I've not yet experimented with. So in terms of sponsored TV, if you mentioned that I, if you realized I didn't um, mention any sponsored display or sponsored brands as part of our launch strategy, I think sponsored brands and sponsored display, they don't have the organic effect, the organic ranking effect that sponsored products has. So usually we will do that only after a month, two or three, we'll start doing sponsored brands or sponsored display if it's something that we want to do. So in terms of loan strategy, um, in terms of organic ranking, I'm not sure what sponsored TV if that will help or not. I don't know. And in terms of conversion, it's something that I'm not tested yet, but we're actually excited to test it as a you know, it's it's brand new. I think they released it two weeks ago. Yeah. Okay, uh, we got two more. Uh, Neil, I tried an auto campaign that only found two keywords that were new to me. I spent a lot of money and got hardly any sales. So that's just some more background Okay, so yeah, so when you do an auto campaign and you see that you don't convert, again, if the search terms are relevant, then it's a conversion issue of the listing, right? If the search terms were not relevant, then you can see from which of these um, four, um, four targeting, it got triggered from close match, loose match, substitutes, or complements. So if all of these four different targeting, if they all triggered irrelevant search terms, then again, you don't need to do an auto campaign because it'll only cost you money. But if they do trigger relevant search terms and you don't convert, that's a problem with the listing. Again, and you need to see what you can do to improve the conversion rate of your listing. Four minutes. Okay. All right, from Tuyan, what is your process of finding the negative keywords to add into campaigns at launching? Oh, I love this question. That's a great question because um, sometimes we will also add negative keywords right at launch. 
before we have any data. And a good example is, so let's say you're selling um, men's shoes, okay? And you want to make sure that you that, that you never show up for women, right? Then we'll add, for example, women, girls, ladies as, an, as a negative phrase right off the bat. So it's usually number one common sense. Like if you know that this product can easily be confused with a different product, again, for a, the best example that I have is men and women, um, and you 100% know that you would never want to show up for any keyword that has in it woman, girl, lady, all that keywords, then that's something we'll add as a negative phrase. Another great tip that I want to share that we do in the beginning to basically try to add negatives before we start is we will take your product and we'll see what the auto-suggested keywords from Amazon is, okay? So you go, you create a manual campaign and you see the auto-suggested keywords. If you see that Amazon auto-suggest certain irrelevant keywords, we'll add them as a negative because that means that in an auto campaign, that means Amazon will usually um, show your product for these type of keywords because this is how Amazon currently understands your product. So right off the bat, you can see if you have, if the suggested keywords are off, take those keywords and add them as a negative into your auto campaigns so you, you won't need to waste money be, be, and, you know, like, before getting data, they'll, they'll get clicks on no sales. If they're irrelevant and you see Amazon is suggesting it, you can add it as a negative um, even at launch. But besides that, I, I would say you'll see as the data comes in, you see what converts, what doesn't convert, and that's when you'll add negative keywords. Okay, and I think this one will probably be our last one before uh, you gotta leave. Uh, from Simon, what are the top three performance metrics metrics that we as sellers should place on our PPC agencies? That's a great question. I love it. So it's really, it really depends what your goal is. Okay. So if your goal is to, I'll basically explain what I'm saying. So if, when we take on a client, usually we have something that we call the client needs to fill out an intake sheet and they need to put in their objectives on the product level. We want to understand from you, what is it that you want to see? Let's say if you have more sales with a lower profit, are you happy with that in the short term? What if we lower your A calls or your tackles but sales drop? Are you happy with that? So certain sellers are more focused on growth and, and they're willing to sacrifice profit. Certain sellers are more focused on profit and they are willing to sacrifice growth and even lose sales if the profit can increase. So I would say you need to know it's not about the top three metrics. It's really about what is it that you, you want to accomplish? Do you want to grow? Then this should be your main KPI. Do you want to bring your tackles down? Then this should be your KPI. Do you want to bring your equals down? Then this should be your API. So you have to know before you go to any agency, what is it that I want to accomplish? And some of the people make it more complicated than it is. It's, it's really not. What is my goal that I want to accomplish? Come back in month two, a month three, and see did we accomplish it or not. All right, Isaac. And guys, this is why I always want to have the questions up front. So I know when to stop the questions that I have to ask from Isaac, because we've got a bunch here. I want to get to them. Um, maybe what we could do is have Isaac uh, either be part of the WhatsApp group or Facebook group, or we'll just get him to come back soon. Uh, Isaac, how do people get a hold of you? So first of all, people can um, just contact me and Isaac at igppc.com. That's I S A A C at igppc.com. You can check out our website, igppc.com. Uh, follow, me, follow me on LinkedIn. I try to be active. Everything that I post, I, I try that it should be value driven, something that people can take out, some actionable advice. So, yeah, that's basically where people can reach me. All right. I know you have to, to go. We're running a little late for you. So, um, Isaac, thanks for coming on. Want more great information? Don't forget to subscribe by clicking here. Also, if you want to check out our latest podcast, click over here. Entrepreneur, entrepreneur, entrepreneur.